Um, but today I'm going to be talking about dissecting Gadon. Um, what? Don't automatically play my damn slides. Okay. <laughs> um, so basically, um, over the course of this past year, we've uh, at the Jordan Ference Collection have accessioned um, roughly uh, 20 to 30 amateur collections, over a thousand slides by various creators. But this particular collection um, that was identified as one CL. Gedon, um captured my imagination so much that I, I really started digging deep into the research. So this talk is going to be about how one takes uh, a set of physical artifacts, a, a piece of the material culture, but with little context and, and does their best to create a cohesive story and to, to figure out how these things fit together, maybe even potentially make an identification on the stereographer himself. Uh, so this is this is one of his stereo views showing uh, the two one of the two characteristics that that leads me to believe that this is a cohesive collection, by which I mean it's a single authorship create collection from one creator. You'll you'll note the rounded edges uh, that he masked when printing his positives. Um, this is this is quite unique in Great War stereography. So. Before we, we jump into the meat of this presentation, I just wanted to show a few of the diverse stereos in the collection uh, to demonstrate why I think this is a, a collection worth putting this much effort into. So here we see um, an, a very nice portrait of some colonial infantry troops. Um, one of the overt goals of Great War in 3D is to pre present the Great War from sort of a, a, a poilu's I view, um, the, showed the, the average soldier and particularly to represent colonial troops, troops of color and, and people who don't get a lot of write-ups in the literature. Uh, so this is, you know, the, the fact that 30% of this collection of 148 slides is made up of Marsuin and other colonial forces is obviously a, a huge benefit. Um, there are some wonderful and, and well-taken ruin shot, um, shots like the cathedral here at Clermont. Um, there are hospital shots, which of course tickle my fancy as, as someone who, um, well, not only is interested in modern ruins, but spent about 10 years documenting abandoned insane asylums. So anything medical um, floats my particular boat. Uh, and of course, one of my heroes in high command receiving the Croix de Guerre. Uh, this is Albert Albert the First receiving the the um, the cross, uh, and and you'll note that this is in Belgium. So so we've already got a diverse geographical region, and we're four slides in. Um, and then there are a number of shots that seem to be personal shots that Gedon took. Uh, just to demonstrate what his own life was like um, living during the period of 1914 to 1915. Now, why do I stop at 1915? Because none of the slides has a caption uh, that's later than August 1915. Now, that could indicate two things, that this is a partial collection and that more slides exist, or that for some reason, no more slides were produced after August 1915. Um, but to, to demonstrate how wonderful the collection is, when I popped open the first box, here were the first four slides I saw. Here we have priest soldiers in a military convoy. Okay, so these are, these are religious figures going off to war. Unfortunately, there's no context as to where uh, or when in 1914, but the, the fact that it, it does have uh, Gedan's annotations on it is very helpful. Uh, most of the slides lack such captions, but this is a, a wonderful view in a hospital. You can see the motion blur, um, which, which indicates that this uh, is another of his early works. Um, these are presumed to be 1914 as well because of context and placement with other images. Um, now here we have, uh, two what appear to be regular infantry troops, two colonial infantry troops, two what appear to be very wealthy men, and a nun, a nurse. Um, so that's a, 
that's a pretty uh, awesome image. And you'll note that the, the hospital architecture doesn't match with the previous hospital we looked at. And finally, uh, we have a group of Moroccan soldiers standing outside yet another architecturally distinct building. So we, we know nothing so far about the stereographer besides that he captured a wide variety of subjects, which leads to the attempt to find it. How, how do we find uh, this CL, presumably Colonel Gadon? Um, and this sort of research is always challenging. Um, there you know, are a number of avenues to approach it. I usually approach it first with Google. Um, so uh, Googling uh, Guédon and cross-referencing with Grand Guerre, I came across this image from a description of a village existing during the Great War. And there's a mention of a Remy Guédon uh, who died in 1915 at the Marne or in the Marne department. Um, so could he have died sometime after August? And could this be my guy? Well, interestingly, I searched for Remy with a Y uh, quite a bit before uh, hitting dead ends. Um, so I started searching Remy with an I and came across this document, documenting the death of one Gabrielle Marie Remy Guedon, a uh, member of the 122nd Infantry Regiment, um, killed uh, near Hill 193, which puts him at the Second Battle of Champagne on um, the 28th of September, 1915. So, so far, this is lining up. Um, that is, of course, in the Marne Department. Um, and uh, it, it looks like I might have gain some headway here. Um, furthermore, that site led me to, interestingly, his, his um, monument, very, very fitting for Remembrance Sunday, but you'll see here, once again, his name was misspelt, or at least it was misspelt on one of the documents. Uh, and finally, I, I came to find this site um, buried, and I had to learn to search in French. Well, I had to use tools I'd, I'd previously used to search in French. It turns out he was a piano maker and his grade was musician soldier, not colonel. So now we have the CL dot to explain uh, in naming the man. Um, but it points out the inaccuracy in his name. Uh, and again, uh, it, it mentions that it's a monument to the dead of, uh, and I'm going to butcher this, Lunel Vieux, uh, I hope. <laughs> but same. Uh, small town that he was credited with taking a photograph in, in 1903 uh, when he was 12 years old. So um, there's the possibility that 1903 is actually 1908 or 1913. These kind of mistakes happen. But so now with a, with a potential tentative identification, uh, we need to try to disprove this identification with the material artifacts in front of us, okay? And this is where the lecture gets forensic. What, what we're doing here is forensic research to try to, to make a definitive ID. And if we're gonna be honest about that, instead of just accepting all the facts so far line up, we need to compare the evidence and look for reasons to exclude Gabriel, Marie, Remy, Guedon from our inquiry, as it were. So let's take a look at a few of his slides. Okay, uh, this slide shows a number of Marsouin troops bivouacked in, somewhere in the Argonne Forest. Um, and to an extent, this makes sense. The 122nd um, fought in the Second Battle of Champagne where presumably Guédon died. Um, and several colonial infantry res regiments, um, Marsouin is a, a colloquialism, um, porpoises, uh, because they were they were what morphed into the marine infantry uh, in the French army, uh, they were resting in the Argonne prior to the battle. So could Guédon have come across this scene? Well, more more than certainly. But then we get to 17 August 1915, and we see uh, a number of high command, including Lord Kitchener and some of the French high command. Um, making an observation and visit to the front in Lorraine. Uh, does this make sense? 
100 kilometers to the east? Um, well, there's one context in which it might. Um, I considered the possibility that Guéron was selected for inclusion in the section photographique de l'armée, uh, which was a unit uh, commissioned in May 1915 by Papa Joffre, who, which um, the, the goal of was to capture various aspects of the war to be used for propagandistic purposes. Uh, is it possible that Guédon was an SBA photographer? Because if so, he might have been invited along to some of these meetings of high command. So we haven't written him off entirely, but it, it does throw some shade on his uh, service with the 122nd Infantry Regiment. But here, moving on, we're in Carency. Um, this is the Second Battle of Artois. Well, the 122nd had no business at this particular battle. They, they weren't there in May 1915. Uh, the caption for the record reads, the booty. Um, so these are, these are some things seized from the Germans with the recapture of currency. Um, this slide, well, now we have to wonder, okay, we've had two in a row that, that really um, might be problematic. And, and then we get to the Chateau de Soup, oh, I'm gonna butcher this, Soup here, um, not, even, not even gonna try with that one. I think it's actually Swap here. Um, in any case, um, we see a fairly intact chateau here in 19, with the caption 1915. Um, but every bit of research on this chateau says that it was destroyed by the Germans in 1917. Could this be a miscaptioning on the slide? If so, it can't be the same Gaudon we found. So let's take a look inside the chateau. Okay, well, we're starting to see that that maybe it isn't destroyed. And we have this absolutely wonderful illustration of uh, some of the stereographer's comrades poking around the chateau. And then we move on to this room. And we realize that, well, perhaps the fact that every English language and almost every French language source states that this building was destroyed by the Germans in 1917 could be partially correct. It could have been severely damaged in 1915. Um, and that would certainly confirm these captions, but we, we need a little more to go on. So let's take a look at the bust of Madame Borson, the, um, the, the woman who actually had owned and had just finished a renovation in 1908 on this chateau. Uh, this is the, the salon. Um, it's gotten bombed out. Well. We can, we can sort of take a peripheral research angle now and look at the Valois albums. What are the Valois albums? Well, they're the remnants of the section photographique de l'armée. Um, and here we find a, a very similar image of the Chateau de Soivir um, and the bust of Madame Boisson. But we notice something here. Um, here's the image from the Valois albums, which contain again the, the remnants of SPA photography. And well, you'll notice that there's a photo bomber in the picture, which I found quite amusing. Um, but then we compare that with Guedon's image. And one thing to notice here is that the images are reversed, either the stereo view or the negative that was that was re, or the, the positive rather that was printed off a negative in the SPA album uh, is horizontally wrong. Um, now, based on a sampling of every other slide in the Guedon collection, um, I would have to argue that none of them show numbers backwards, none of them show letters backwards. Uh, none of them show rank insignia worn backwards. So I'd argue that the slides prove that the SBA official photo is wrong. Unfortunately, this is where we leave our tentative identification of Gabriel Mar Marie um, Remy Guedon, because right here we have a picture attributed to Guedon in the SBA Valois albums. And um, this is dated 
September 1916, and importantly, the date could not be wrong because it features Marshall Douglas Haig. Haig didn't, didn't become a com the commander of the British forces until December 1915. So we know that the Gadon we've located and the Gadon we're after are two different characters, which is unfortunate as I was hoping to, to be able to uh, highlight a, a stereographer on, on Remembrance Sunday, but it was not to be. Um, so what other clues do we use when we're presented with a group of 148 artifacts uh, and trying to narrow it down? Well, you look through every image very carefully, and I'm going to focus on two here. Uh, we did not, of course, find Gedon. So here's an image of a lone poilu um, just standing on a, a ruined roadside. And here's a group from the 1914 bunch of a group of poilu uh, from what appear to be disparate regiments. Uh, and the important thing is in both of these images, regimental insignia is visible, um, is specifically the 19th Infantry Regiment and the 149th Infantry Regiment. Um, so anybody doing this sort of research needs to have a lot of bookmarks, bookmark everything you come by that uh, is, a, is a general universal research, resource for unit identifications, place identifications, uh, in the example of Great War stereography, church identifications, because ruined churches make up quite a lot of it. Um, so let's take a look at these two units based on what we know um, off a French site. This is used through Google Translate. Um, the 19th Infantry Regiment, okay, 1914. Well, we don't really know where Cadon was in 1914. 1915, Battle of Champagne. Um, so similar history to the 122nd, but no mention of Artois. Um, there, there isn't really anything in this infantry history that suggests that attachment to the 19th is uh, in a, could any in any way be assumed. Now the 149th is dodgier to begin with um, because that's a group photo and a unit insignia which you can't make out has only two digits in it, so at least two regiments are represented. But here we see um, 1915, Artois, all year. But all, all year means that the images of the Marceline um, billeting in the Argonne Forest don't make any sense. So uh, again, we, we have no identification right there. In terms of finding Gedong, um after about 30 hours of inquiry, uh, we're, we're left at a dead end in identifying the photographer. Uh, we just simply didn't succeed. However, it's important to note that in doing this work, we learned an awful lot. So I wanna, I wanna highlight why doing this sort of research on your, your personal collections of amateur stereo views, and it doesn't matter, great war, other subjects, uh, any, any amateur collection where you have to do the legwork, uh, these factors are going to come into play. Well, we learned a lot about who we're looking for. We also learned a lot about who we're not looking for. Um, we're certainly not looking for someone who died uh, on 28 September 1915. And um, that's sad uh, because there were so many correlating factors, but it simply cannot be that fellow. Um, We've also identified a number of sites uh, which we must correlate with any, um, with any further identification. Um, okay. We've learned a lot of random facts about various regions which will help in future projects and future identifications. Um, for example, uh, in, in researching uh, Remy Guedon's grave in uh, SWIP, I learned a little bit about SWIP and about their um, monuments there. Uh, we've established a chronology for future studies. So I, I because this lecture was meant to be uh, to VSC timeframes, I didn't go through an entire chronology, but we have a relatively good idea of about eight or nine places and times at which the Gidon we're looking for is at. Now, the most important thing, however, uh, hopefully, is that we've enjoyed a plethora of unambiguously great stereos. Every work in this particular collection is uh, 
top notch and um, really merits a lot of consideration. Um, and that's just another another reason why this collection is taking uh, on a lot of prominence for the Jordan Ferrans collection at present. Um, and so one, one thing I wanted to share with you all is as of today, remember it's Sunday, um, we are now uh, live on Great War in 3D with a, a full image searchable gallery um, database, which allows you to search for various slides. Uh, recently, we've added over 250 Brentanos, commercial glass stereos from France. And uh, all of these have anaglyphs correlating with them if you can't free view. Uh, coming soon, we're adding 100 additional Realistic Travels paper, paper card stereo views, um, and also the Gedon collection and a collection on the Allied Army of the Orient and Salonika. So uh, the rest of you great war buffs uh, out there should uh, take a look and uh, bookmark the new site. And uh, yeah, that's all I got. We did not find Gedon, but we found out quite a bit.